Hey, how's it going? So I just wanted to get on here real quick. Uh, as you can see, very casual and informal. To say a few words about a day or <laughs> what happened some <laughs> about the other day when I went out and had some experiences and <clears throat> just to remind uh, everyone and myself that might see this, this channel is in the main about expressing what kind of experiences I'm having um, as I go through the course of my Kundalini slash spiritual awakening. And so that's what I'm going to do here. And it's just, you know, my opinion is just commentary. I'm not telling anybody to do anything. I'm just saying like, hey, this happened to me and I want to share it with you because I think it might be of interest to other people. So, um, the other day, like two days ago, I had to, <laughs> well, I, uh, I thought I had a doctor's appointment. Um, oh, <laughs> let me get confused for a second. Doctor's appointment day, uh, different day. But I uh, ended up being able to go out with my uh, caregiver that comes and helps me out uh, a few hours, uh, you know, like part time during the week. And so I was able to go um, shopping <laughs> and we did have an errand before that, and it's escaping me now, but it had to have been some form of doctor's appointment for me, otherwise I wouldn't have been out of the house. She's not really supposed to take me, and I am really shouldn't go out because I have, like, premorbidities and so and so forth. So, um, uh, but anyway, when I have... When I have to go out, I try to take the time to use the opportunity to also shop. So I'm out there double masked and, you know, all washed up and everything. And when we left the house, oh, I guess it was the doctor's appointment day. I had the right day the wrong month, so we went to the doctor and she couldn't go in there either. And it's this big rigmarole, like getting the chair, my wheelchair in and out of the car, and then I got to get in the building, and, you know, there's two um, companies doing medical treatments in the building, like the place I go, and then the other side does some other stuff, and it's a cancer center, though, and so that's what everybody's doing there is cancer stuff, and so, you know, there's like kind of traffic. I, it's far, far less than the normal day. Usually that place is packed like it's a, like a Five Guys establishment. They're just giving food away. I guess that's not really good since it's a cancer place, but hey, you know, you gotta laugh. So anyway, it's not like that right now. And, uh, but you still have to space. And there was like enough traffic to where the spacing had me as when I go to the hospital, if there's a lot of traffic uh, here in town, this place is not in town where I am, it's a little bit away, but uh, you have to be like, like out the door and like the three foot mark is the door and the person in front of you is, you know, three feet away from the door. And it's kind of interesting. And, and then there's also people that are just like, going in and out, you know, brushing, not brushing, like, no one's, like, brushing by and actually touching you, but, you know, they're making a little draft, so it's interesting. I hold my breath a lot. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm there in my two masks and all ready to go, and I didn't think it was that day before we left, and my caregiver, uh, she says, well, isn't today your appointment? And it was like, 15 minutes before we would have had to have left and I'd already taken a shower but I did would have had to go and like 
you know, zhuzh everything up and put on fresh clothing and, you know, appropriate outerwear and shoes and socks and, like, pants and stuff like that. So I rush through that and we get out the door in time and we get up there and the woman at the front desk, when I finally reach the front desk, she says, <laughs> you're here on the right day, but it's next month. And so... I was like, okay, thank you, and I turned around, and <laughs> my friend had just parked her car, and she turned everything off and was about to pull out her crocheting, and <laughs> she looks up, and I roll out the door, and I'm just cracking up, and she's like, I'm like, hi, <laughs> and she, I think, was kind of stunned and sat there for a second, so I start rolling over. But she's in between two cars, so I said, let me just let her come out, because there's no way I could have gotten me and the chair in. It was just, she needed, we needed to have an open area around her. So anyway, that happened, and that was the excuse to be able to go to the store. So, what I didn't do, that I normally do religiously, because when you get to be my age which is just over the mid 50s and i can't speak for men bladders about this but it's really a good idea even if you don't have my issues which i'm not going to go into let's just say i have to make sure and do a pit stop everywhere i can if i want to go out and <clears throat> not have some form of inconvenience you know um it's just that I have time, if, and I know it's coming, but sometimes I need to be like really close to where the restroom is when it's time to go do that, you know, like there, there's no time wasting. So anyway, we go like way up this way, you know, and then come back past my house and then the store I want to go to is almost as far. And it's it's about half the distance as far as we just came from going the opposite direction and we go to the store and I said okay first thing I want to do is um, can you help me uh, get to the restroom like it would just would have been faster if she pushed me rather than my own under my own power so we get up to the door and I'm like okay like I gotta go and <laughs> as I just explained it was like a good time for me to take care of that and the door is locked clunk 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 and there's a sign on it and it's like because of you know what the restroom is closed and I was like oh my god and my first impulse here's the part that I'm on here about was to do what I often do which is to have frustration or rage or whatever it is well up super fast in in you know into my like consciousness and being and a lot of times I'm not gonna like lash out or start yelling at anybody or like breaking stuff but you know I will just like okay I'm done I'm leaving I'm out of here and just to like do it at a more a better time you know more convenient having gone to the bathroom first <laughs> whatever and uh for some reason and i know this i know better i kind of study you know like the spiritual way to work with your mind and how to kind of rid yourself of anger and get to the root of it and blah 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 but it's easier said than done when you've been doing it for so long. And even, I, you know, knew better kind of when I was doing it. But you get older and you learn stuff and you learn about yourself and you take stock in your behavior. And it, Well, it's actually not just when you get older. For me, it's just been like kind of a constant ongoing thing in my life. I'm constantly like you know, so scrutinizing myself, like, overly harshly in most cases. So, I mean, it's not new, and it, a lot of it is not, you know, conditions or considerations I never had before as far as conducting myself, particularly in these situations where emotion just wells up really fast, and it takes, like 
practice and an effort to like be present and be there and go okay here and now the world's not gonna end like what are you so mad about and when I first started to deliberately think that way to just like get myself out of the whatever the overwhelming emotion was it was it took an effort it was like how to like and it still is break a habit and so something just clicked like the switch flipped and I love this term even though I think it's totally snarky and I'm sure like everybody that's a DI or the equivalent in the military has an experience of some one of those DI types saying unfuck it <laughs> but um I didn't think about it at the time, but like later, I'll get to it later, but um, <laughs> I did say, you know what? I need some stuff here. I haven't been able to go myself and pick the things that I want because <laughs> the person that helps me now thinks my dietary habits are totally weird. <laughs> And they're not really, they're just, uh, you know, I'm from LA and I lived in San Francisco and Seattle and I've lived with vegans and didn't eat any meat or dairy for a year. And I just have like a wider scope of like what I will consume and why. And I think I'm just more adventurous that way, but it's difficult for her it's particularly at the place we went to find something she's never seen or heard of before and at a place where it may or may not be there there's no regularity it's just sort of a whatever they happen to come by I don't know if your area has the discount grocery but I, I, I would think so because everywhere I've lived has it by name or you know that that uh, franchise or so, or some equivalent you know I mean even like a dollar store or a dollar general will have like a food department this is much more uh, well I mean more actual food <laughs> gourmet food like soft cheeses from like France or Canada or you know or French style or European you know whatever like it has you know a lot of variety um <clears throat> so and and like i said the, the you can't count on the same thing always being there and so it's hard to send someone you know to get what you want so whenever i have the opportunity like i did that day we went i went with her and it was good and i knew that like i needed to like restock my pantry after a few months of not being able to get to the store I was like, I have to do this. And so I said, okay, I don't have to pee right now. I can wait. And if I do, then I'm going to have WAP in their store because they locked the bathroom, the restroom. And that's wet ass pants <laughs> because sitting down in my chair, I would have a wet ass. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway <laughs> that was the thing uh, and then so I was able to do my shopping and you know by this time my companion was like okay well because I only have her for a limited amount of limited amount of time when I do have her help and she's like okay well we got such and such amount of time so like don't take too long and I was like I got this like I knew what I wanted I know where stuff is generally and um, we got the shopping done and loaded up in the car and then drove back to my house, which was quick. And still had to stop off at the mailbox. But by that point, she was like, oh, I don't want to stop because I got to pee. And I'm like, yeah, but, you know, you got to go after we get done at my house. So you don't have time to go back and forth and back. And she's like, okay, okay. And she grabbed the mail real quick. And... We got in, and I was able to let her go ahead and go, and then I was able to go just fine. I made it. There was, like, no frantic rush, which is something that also happens when you have the older women bladder. It's like you know you have to go, and you're 
headed home and you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, but it's like once you see the door, your eyes tell your bladder, that's the, we're here. <laughs> and the bladder's like, okay. <laughs> or it wants to. And I know it's not me. I'm not, I'm not just generalizing. Um, I have spoken to many other of my peers about this. <laughs> and so it's a thing that happens. But that day, it didn't. Um, until I just got safely in and to the bathroom. And it was just marvelous. I felt so good. And I want to mention here that I listened to a guy named Lee Carroll channel an entity called Cryon, K-R-Y-O-N, and Cryon is the shit, <laughs> Cryon is the bomb, and he's very instructive, and I've learned so much about, like, the subtle things in the world, and myself, and my place in that subtle world, and the obvious <laughs> world, and just a lot of things that, um, let's just put it this way, I have always been kind of a navel gazer, and, and that is particularly a good trait to have if you're going to be all granola woo-woo, <laughs> which is what I'm going for. <laughs> so, um, one thing that he talks about, um, he's sort of a herald, I guess. And I call it a he because it's a man channeling it, but it's not even a singular entity. It's a a group, a collective of entities of of from the angelic realm. Um, and so, one thing he or it talks about a lot is uh, how we have way more power to control, like whether we get sick or not. Um, and it's like all the keys to everything you could want, you know, <laughs> like superpowers almost, or superpowers even. Uh, you have the power within you and a lot of the ability to do like fantastic things are in sort of uh, pieces of DNA locked in what we, would call uh, for like most of my life uh the junk dna got a message sorry about that so um and he talks about how like if you can talk to your body you can you know tell it to stop aging you can like tell it to reverse uh, like illness or you can tell it to address illness and especially like now in our modern era because this is an ancient trait that we all have in our DNA just hasn't been accessible for a lot of reasons I'm not going to go into right here but um, we have been able to at, at the same time as our science has become sort of aware of this formerly known as junk DNA is to be actually like have like links to quantum physics which is also something the cryon talks about a lot and again I'm not going to go into that because even though I'm not like doing physics you know numbers problems <laughs> equations uh it's still really complicated but um anyway that is um, synonymous with him sort of making the world aware of the fact that there are these hidden treasures in, in your DNA. And so as the science becomes aware of it, we become made aware of it. And then also there are all these external forces sort of making changes in us. and. It's not like it's being done to us without our consent, even though we don't know about it. And that's something else that's also very complicated. And that's all I want to say about it. So I don't forget what I'm trying to say. But my point is, I have, ever since he started talking about it, I've been trying to like get into the habit, get into the right vibe, get into the proper mode to like, 
you know, communicate with this DNA, you know, especially if about something like this lady's having to run to the restroom problem. <laughs> um, and I think that day, and this is, I, I think, like three, four years now I've been listening to Crown um, channelings, and uh, that day, <clears throat> I think when I said, look, I'm just going to do this because I'm here, I need to do it, and, you know, the world's not going to end if I wet my pants. I was wearing a diaper, to be totally honest with you, because if I don't get to the bathroom in time, I don't want to straight wet my pants and just wash the floor with pee anywhere, like in public. I mean, it would be embarrassing, but also not the end of the world. Like, a bunch of people I do not know. <laughs> like, okay, well, you got a good laugh at my expense today. I can laugh at myself, so that's that, you know? And maybe that played a part in, like, opening the communication between myself and what I needed from my body and what I did not need it to do. And I feel like that day we made the connection me and my dna and so that is super duper to me <laughs> um i'm like all proud of myself um less about not wetting myself although i'm happy that that did not happen i'm proud of myself for making that connection like getting through to myself basically <laughs> So, um, and the other thing was, is that I also didn't, like, even if I didn't, like, have, like, a really gnarly outward reaction of, like, emotion, uh, like, uh, anger or whatever, that day or any other day, um, I don't... I do feel it though. I do have like the reactions, but it just isn't internal. And so what is visible on the outside, I hope what I am projecting is not so much that, <laughs> like, you know, not as angry as I might be feeling or, you know, not like losing control and just like not taking a breath before, you know, someone says, hi, I love you, and just going, wah, and biting their head off, you know what I mean? Like, I do not want to do that. I do not want to be that way. It's off-putting, and it makes people fearful, you know, it makes little animals fearful of you, so even though it's contained, it still emanates, and I want to not contain it, I want to get to the root of it, find what it is that I, that it's bothering me and like forgive whoever I need to get forgive, including myself and the situation and just also understand that the school of thought that I believe to, believe in, in regard to, um, I guess behavior is that um, another complicated bundle of stuff, but let's just say the law of attraction and the law of manifestation, which is basically, you know, you give as good as you get, you reap what you sow, you know? Like, there's, <laughs> there's so much complication, there's so much, like, uh, talk and uh, lesson <laughs> behind those two laws, but they're kind of self-explanatory. Um, but I just, like, I, I, I want to, like, uh, change myself in a different way than I would have, you know, like, gosh, gee, like, even 10 years ago. Because I have, like, a better understanding of myself and the way that I'm acting and also the thing that I was going to say that this is this one of the school part of the school of thought that I believe in is that yes there's like something to that whole matrix thing although it, for me and my understanding and experience of it it's not like the matrix that's a metaphor but 
I guess having the state of mind where you are aware that you're like in a movie, so to speak, and then once you have that in mind, the ability to adjust your behavior, if you can just like slow down for a minute, or me, when I say you, I mean me, slow down for a second and just take a breath or just like, hold on, don't just react without even thinking first, like really just stop and go, okay, why am I so mad? Who am I mad at? Is it really that big a deal? Like, is the anger necessary? And hopefully like dissipate it that way and like I was saying earlier that takes effort and that takes practice but that's kind of like my mindset about it I want to like have what I'm doing and feeling be from my mind a projection like a movie and how I behave or how I enter a situation and manipulate it or change it in any way is in my power to have a, a huge effect on how how things play out. So, you know, if I go in to a situation all crappy, well, people are just going to want to give me back crappy. And it's like, how many years has it taken me to realize that, yes, I realized that, but I realize it, I recognize it on a different level than I did 30 years ago, you know, like obviously, you know, if you go in somewhere acting crappy, people are going to like react in kind <laughs> in a lot of cases. So yeah, I don't want to do that. So in my movie, I want to try and maintain a, a, a higher level of consciousness, a higher, happier, more positive vibration, like throughout all of my life. And so that day in that incident, all, all that I talked about, like, I hope that I got across that that was a different day for me, like, because of the way I acted and didn't act or react, everything worked out well. And that's actually been the case quite a bit lately, you know, um, I'm not going to start a whole other story. That was enough that all I said. So... Now that I got out of my system, I hope that it's useful to anyone that should happen to see this. And I would just like to say for joining me, thank you and good night.